game, the Giants did something today. It was like the whole mall was on fire, and they decided to put out the flames at Auntie Annie's, the pretzel shop. I mean, there's a lot more going on than just a um, great line. Isn't that a good line? That's no. very true. I mean, I don't. It I may don't be more important it. than that, but it more be maybe maybe more like the department store, but it's something. But why why do you not agree with it, Don? Don't you think there's more problems than the offensive coordinator? The 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 Bucks had the ball at the beginning of the game and went through the giant defense like a hot knife through butter. They didn't have any resistance whatsoever. That was the easiest drive I've ever oh, seen. Yeah. So I mean their offense is in shambles, but their defense didn't play that well either. No, but you know what? There isn't a singular piece on defense that I need to be evaluated to determine whether I'm going to give him a fifth year option. That's the difference. Right? And Saquon Barkley. Right, so I'll make my decisions on defense. They're going to destroy this whole thing. It's all gone. It's all over. I mean, it, it's really even a joke to talk about anybody returning. All right, it's unless they rattle off seven straight wins, they're blowing this up. But they need to evaluate their players. And Jason Garrett's been an embarrassment. Points scored this year, they're ranked twenty sixth. Last year, they're ranked thirty first. Only the Jets were worse offensively than the Giants were last year. But you've got to evaluate, do we have a quarterback? What do we do with Saquon Barkley? And if your offense isn't functioning, Michael, then how are you supposed to, in these last seven games, be able to evaluate what you have? So, yeah, I agree. You can get rid of Graham. You can get rid of Judge. You can blow the whole thing up. But right now, they've got to look at these seven games, as meaningless as they are for the playoffs, as tough as they're going to be to watch for Giant fans. They're exceptionally important to the evaluation of those two players and what you do with them. What do you do with Saquon Barkley? What do you do with Daniel Jones? So, let's get Freddie Kitchens in here. Let him call some plays. Let's let, use these seven games to evaluate, and then we can move forward. You don't have to do that on defense. You don't have to do that on special teams. You've got to do it with this offense. Freddie Kitchens? Did I hear Freddie Kitchens is going to be calling plays? I'm going to tell you something right now. Hold on one second here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me explain something to you both on the program here. As I polish off some of this ham with nacho cheese. <laughs> it's time for pictures to eat. You hear me, New York? You hear me, Star State? It's time for your boy. Ready to keep him to eat. I'm ready. Woo! Eat him. Mm, this is some delicious ham, by the way. <laughs> Boy, this is disgusting. With Hillshire Farm and some uh, old El Paso nacho cheese. You know what I call that? The lunch of champions. It's Kiki time. <laughs> <laughs> Kiki. Wow. Who's not but, ready for that? But, but, right, Michael, that's it. We have to evaluate what we have. And you can't do it with an offensive coordinator that just has become a joke. But, now, I'm not defending Jason Garrett by any stretch of the imagination. But sometimes there's a little you could do if you're not getting... Uh, I mean, everything falls apart with a bad offensive line. Everything. Guy had no time yesterday. He, he didn't. Uh, Daniel Jones had one of his worst games. I mean, the best pass he threw was to Steve McClendon. Well, can, we, can we also, though, let's stop for a second on Jones, though. At some point, we're going to have to acknowledge just how bad this primetime record is, too. In terms of you thinking about a guy for your future, when, how is he when the lights are on? But so let, let far, me, let me give you, let awful. Me, but let, let me give you a, a, the, the, the second part of that. Okay. If you're playing on primetime, you're probably playing a better team than you. You're okay. playing a good team. They, they don't have a good team. They're not going to beat good teams. Yeah, they're not, they're not playing a bad team. But can you get one, though? And last night it didn't help that it was he's up against the GOAT and he just absolutely crumbled. But that was the rarity last night. A lot of these um, primetime games are games in which we're talking about how they made a mistake late. You know that that Washington game was a post was a prime time game. The Kansas City game was a prime time game. Both winnable games when you look at the final score. Last night was just the culmination of just everything falling apart on them. They they really should have only scored thirty three points. The touchdown they got was gifted to them. 
And the one time that they actually had some imagination on a play, they scored their only touchdown. I don't think, you know, I'm always the one defending Joe Judge. He doesn't escape unscathed here. Well, what's happened for the first 10 weeks of the season? Does he have no input in the offense? So Jason Garrett works unencumbered by any guidance by the head coach. So now I think that what this is, this is Joe Judge saving his backside. It's exactly what it is. Well, let me fire an assistant coach. Let me fire a coordinator because then they're not going to fire me. And and Jordan Ronan was on um, with DCR this morning. DCR. DPHO and Rothenberg. DeAndar. Right. And um, he said Joe Judge isn't getting fired. And now he just pretty much solidified that. It's almost like changing quarterbacks, too. That's what Matt Nagy was hoping to do. Bringing Fields this way, he wasn't going to get fired. Well, listen, I just had a young quarterback. Well, now uh, it's Jason Garrett's fault. I think there's so much fault to go around. So sorry you didn't get the point either, Don. One of of your worst picks of the year, let's just be honest. And you were so sure of it, too. I, I told him I hated it. I said I hate this pick. I remember you saying that. It was disgusting. All of us got three points on the on the week. We all got the one and two point pick. Wow. No. Don got a three. Right? Yeah. Or I got this a three. was his three. No, he his, his, the Giants were his one. Giants yeah. were his one, so he got his three. Got it. I got my three on Thursday. Yeah. By the way, you knew you knew Tom Brady was not being denied last night when he scrambled for that first down. Eleven yards. Yeah, he wasn't messing around last night. But I don't. I, it's it on the surface. It looks like it's a way for Judge to be able to save his job, and you and you let Garrett go because now now the season's over at three and seven, all but mathematically eliminated. This team's not making the playoffs. It was either going to be tough had they won the game, but at least if they had won the game, there's some confidence there. You just beat a really good team on the road, and I guess it was difficult to fire Garrett after the Raider game because you came off a win, but Garrett's not been good all year. So, you know, you, you chose the time now. You just wonder if it's an organizational decision for the reasons I gave before. All right, now we got to evaluate our talent. we got to bring in somebody here that's going to help know if we can get something out of Jones and Barkley. Because you're not saving the season. The offense isn't good enough to save the season. John, uh, John um, Don, you've long not liked Jerry Jones. Right. You've made that very, very clear. Mm-hmm. What if this was actually a play by him to have Jason Garrett infiltrate the Giants and just do bad things? Would you gain a lot of respect for Jones then? I mean, uh, uh, that's even more of a reason to hate him, but there would be a sign of respect that he would have that kind of wherewithal. (laughs) But he had him as his head coach for God knows how long. Yeah, but they were always representative. They were representative, but also looked upon as underachievers as well during that span of time. Mm -hmm. But he comes in and... You know, he's been brutal for the last two years. So if you didn't like him as the offensive coordinator, Michael, you got sucked into the win against the Raiders thinking, all right, maybe we're going to be able to salvage the season, or, or should you have fired Garrett and then have Kitchens take over as the offensive coordinator You know, during a bye week, get everything in a row instead of in a short week as you get ready for Philadelphia. So to me, the firing came because now it's over. Now it's over, and now all these last seven games are about evaluating. Maybe it is about evaluating Joe Judge, Patrick Graham, but maybe it's also evaluating the talent that you have here, and let's put these offensive players in the best position to be successful. Because I don't know what we have in Daniel Jones. I mean, Dan Orlovsky broke down a play yesterday that completely defended Daniel Jones in one of his miserable throws because you, you saw... The 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 all twenty two and there were like four giant players all in the same place. It's like the play was designed to completely fail. So we look at it, we see every interception, every bad sack, every bad throw, and say Daniel Jones has no ability. And maybe he doesn't. And I and I'm leaning towards him not being that good a quarterback. But if the offensive plays aren't there to the point where your offensive coordinator got fired in the middle of the season. Can't we also say that maybe the reason Daniel Jones has looked so bad is this is who his offensive coordinator has been the last two years? You could. He wasn't great with another offensive coordinator with Shermer, though. But but with that Shermer was his first and with Mike, year. Well, it's interesting, Michael, because I took a look. Mike Shula was the offensive coordinator under Pat Shermer and probably did de facto offensive coordinator because Shermer was an offensive guy. In 2019, they were 15th in points scored. Right. 
You know, so it wasn't good enough, obviously, because the team was horrid and they had to fire everybody, and, and, and Shula became collateral damage in the firing of Shermer. But the Giants in 2019, that was Daniel Jones took over for Eli Manning in that game against Tampa, was the offensive player of the week. We, so we were excited about Daniel Jones. And then they end up firing everybody at the end of his rookie season, and then they bring in Judge, and they bring in um, Jason Garrett, and they were 31st in points scored last year, and so far 26 in points scored this year. So at least the evidence shows you that maybe coaching is largely responsible for this. So, I don't know, maybe Freddie Kitchens isn't any better, but at least it'll be another opportunity to see, does it get better? You've got to evaluate what you have at quarterback, especially when you have so many picks and high picks going into next year's draft. There was a scene uh, in Friends, I don't know if you remember, Don, where they're carrying a couch uh, up a, a stairway. Mm-hmm. And all Ross is screaming is, pivot, pivot, right? Which got a lot of laughs. Right. We got a lot of people that are pivoting here. You know, Rex Ryan hated Robert Sala. Pivot, he loves him now. Mike Tannenbaum has been on the on the giant bandwagon for what? The whole season, right? We've, we've he, wondered why. He said he was, I think the word was bullish, on the Giants. Right. So Tannenbaum today on KJM, uh, you can hear them from 8 to 10 right here on 98.7, uh, he came out and said it might be time to move on from Daniel Jones. Baker Mayfield goes into Foxborough, massive AFC game, no Kareem Hunt, no Nick Chubb, and they were terrible. And like that told us everything, kind of felt that way for a while about Baker, where I had concerns. And last night is a great example of like Daniel Jones, like go stand toe-to-toe with Tom Brady, Monday Night Football. You don't even have to win, but give your organization the confidence that every week you're giving us a legitimate chance to win. And clearly, leaving that stadium last night, if the Giants are being honest and sober, they're having massive questions about Daniel Jones because the mistakes he's making are not getting better. All right, then he also said the Giants will have options at quarterback next year. You got the big three in the offseason of Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, and Deshaun Watson. I'm selling the They're all under contract. Yeah, and they're all going to be available. So I would start with that, and then I would go from there. I would go to the Bs, the Ryan Fitzpatrick's of the world. Because right, oh, a, a, a no, right now, a B is better. All right, but Mike, they don't what even do want a B. But a B is better than what they have right now. Oh, my God. Ryan Fitzpatrick. No. Uh, Give me another year of Daniel Jones. Russell Wilson's intriguing because clearly Seattle's going to rebuild, and the Giants will have two first-round picks. That could be enough to bring in Wilson. The problem is they've got no cap room. Also, Don, why would any quarterback want to come here? Well, because there are weapons here. I mean, uh, there there are players here. Tony looks like there's he's no a offensive line. Well, I mean, obviously he didn't have a great offensive line in Seattle either, and was able to make it work. Listen, it's it's a long shot. Russell Wilson probably wouldn't want to come here, but that doesn't mean you can't try. And if you've got talented offensive players, that's clearly what the Giants are saying. They just fired their offensive coordinator, and Joe Judge said before the firing, "We've got talent here." So. Is Galladay the reason why he was targeted two times last night, or was it the play calling? So if you believe you've got the receivers, and you think this... I thought Thomas played well last night. Forget the touchdown. I thought he played well overall. Thomas now has more TDs receiving, by the way, than Galladay. Right. So so could you send two first-round picks to Seattle to get Russell Wilson, and does that salvage... This cap hell you're in, because that's the problem, Michael. They're in cap hell with all the money they spent because they thought they were going to be competitive this year. So in a year where there really isn't a great quarterback in the draft, do you double down on this talent and try to bring in Russell Wilson? But Russell Wilson, what is he, 32? Right. You're going to give up two first rounds, which might be in the top five. Good be. I don't don't know if I'm doing that. But what you have to do now in these next seven is to say that Daniel Jones clearly isn't the guy. And what I would say to Mike Tannenbaum is, all right, you don't think Daniel Jones is the guy. You don't think Baker Mayfield's the guy. But you believe in Stefanski. If you believe in Stefanski, then you say, you know, then obviously the player's not any good. But if you just fired the offensive coordinator, we don't know a lot about Joe Judge, especially as any kind of an offensive genius, because he's not. So how do we know this is not Daniel Jones, uh, uh, this, the coaching staff's fault? That's what they got to figure out over the next seven. Because the stats were better with Shula and Shermer than they were now with Judge and with Garrett. So now you bring in Kitchens for the final seven, and then we'll see. You've got to evaluate it. So I'm not ready to throw Daniel Jones away, but I, I've got to see these seven. And if it doesn't get any better, then you're going to have to throw it away. But what do you do? 
Do you draft a quarterback for the sake of drafting a quarterback? Do you go out and get a veteran guy to double down on the talent you have? They're probably going to be forced to do that, Michael, because you're in cap hell. What are you going to do? You have $4 million of cap space. You've got all these guys under contract. Can are I, you then I forced something? to live in the now because of that, Peter? Can I throw something out there? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I know this is what we do. This is what Sports Talk Radio is, and this is what fans do. But, like, last night, we were yesterday afternoon, we were having a conversation about that if the Giants played well, why don't well, let's go out there and have a season. Is is there a little bit of overreacting that 24 hours later because of a loss to a motivated Super Bowl champion team, we're saying that basically everyone on this team is worthless? No, because uh, the games, if the Giants play decent football, the games that are upcoming are winnable. But if you want to look at it on the other side, everybody on those other teams looking at the Giants go, well, these are winnable games for us. So let's see what they do. You're right. Ed, the whole narrative could change, Peter. I mean, talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick now, talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, Mike Zanabow, come back to me, baby. That's Ryan been, Fitzpatrick? It's been a couple of weird takes over the last week for our boy. That's a, that's a weird that's one. Not, I mean, uh, listen, Jones was bad last night, but to the point where you're willing to get in any veteran instead of him? Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, really? I would, t- I would take a chance on drafting a quarterback out of college hoping he'd become better than Ryan Fitzpatrick You know what at this stage of his career. Red hot if I was a Giant fan. Hmm. The Eagles are in the middle of a a rebuild with a quarterback that they took. What was Jalen Hurts in the second round? And they're a competitive team. The Giants have been running on a treadmill. They're not going anywhere for what, five years? Well, well, they're the only the, the Eagles with a coach that really can't form a sentence and a second round quarterback. They're they're actually a viable playoff well, option. Well, this is what's really scary because I, I was trying to do the math on this offense beyond the, the last two years, all right? And, and I and I and I was looking at points scored, all right? Because that that's how I want to judge an offense, right? That's that's the whole point is the score. I don't care about your yards and all that. I want to know how many points you score. And as I said, in 2019 they were 15th, which is in the upper half of the league with a 32 team league in 2018 they were 17th in point score now the regime before that which would be the mcadoo mike sullivan offense they were 31st in scoring in 17 and 26th in 16 when they went 11 and 5 so this offense has not functioned and has not been consistent since going back to tom coughlin and and, and kevin gilbride i think it's it's been over a half a decade of not very good football. So I'm not going to defend Jason Garrett, but there's a lot of other things here that have been a problem. And we're also talking about a lot of the things we're doing with Daniel Jones we were talking about at the end of Eli's career. We've been talking about the offensive line being bad for how long, Michael? How long? It's forever. I mean, they never protected Eli at the end. That's under, why Eli had such bad years Right, under two different general managers, two different quarterbacks, you know, three different head coaches, three different offensive coordinators, and it's been basically the same result. Awful overall record. Let's not forget about that, too. We could focus so much on the offense, Michael, but the defense stunk last night. Couldn't get off the field on third down. I know it's Tom Brady. I know he's a legend. But the Saints had no trouble against them a couple of weeks ago. Washington didn't have any trouble with them a couple of weeks ago. I mean, you, you put yourself in a third and you know ten situation, and you almost know that they're going to give up a 12-yard catch. The worst feeling in sports. You know, and, and you is. got a Just guy the... who is actually part of your. I watched uh, the entire game on the Madden cast. I think Peter did too. Eli couldn't help but rip this team. They're, they're doubling the wrong guy. They're doubling the wrong guy. He's yelling. Peyton's yelling the same thing. That's why it's not just the offense. The defense, too. Bradbury's had a terrible year after an all-pro season last year. Get eaten up by Evans. They doubled Breit instead of Evans. And and the two Mannings are screaming they doubled the wrong guy. Can't tackle. There's so many things that are wrong with them. That's why I said the anti Annie's right. line was well, so applicable. The whole mall is burning. But but again, but we know that. But who on the defense do you have to take a look at? No, I, th- I, know, I, I understand that, but... It's got to be a functioning well, defense, well, too. But, but, but that that's why, Michael, it's its its really folly to think. And it may happen. You may turn out to be right, but I don't know how anybody comes back. Again, if they, they go 6-1 and one the rest of the way, maybe things can change because it is about wins and losses. But at this particular point, they never seem to beat Philadelphia in a big spot. Why do I believe that this is going to be anything more than a 4-5 or five win season? And why am I bending over backwards to bring anybody back? 
especially if my general manager is going to be you know, forced to retire or walk away. And How again, does anybody look themselves in the mirror, honestly? Well, How does anybody look, look themselves in the mirror and say, judge, I'm doing a great job? Judge washed the blood off his hands last night. All right, but, but he's not responsible for the defense? He's not responsible for the special teams that never get to really ever get good field position for this team. There's not one area of this team that they do well. I I agree. Nothing. And they, they and they don't they they're not great at clock management and timeouts either. No, they they're penalties. Just, they're a confused team. They have some talent, so they're not the worst team in the league. So they'll run into wins against the Saints. They'll run into wins against the Raiders. You know, they're not going to go zero and seven the rest of the way because you know they'll find a way to win a couple of games that like teases you and believes they're really close. But the Raiders and the Saints wins don't look as great now. No, they don't. But they're wins that they got, and at the time you're thinking, hey, well, you never know in a league where you get baffled every single Sunday. But this is not just about this year. It's about what's been happening over and over and over again. So, yeah, Peter, you're right. They went up against a team that very well may lift the Vince Lombardi trophy in a few months. And they're not the only team that's been embarrassed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But did you see anything remotely competitive out that team last night? Where they can hang with that team? Washington found a way to beat them. Saints found a way to beat them. Heck, this team last year almost found a way to beat the Buccaneers and Tom Brady when they were on their way to a Super Bowl. So last night, did you see anything worth keeping? Did you see any any bright spot for the future? Anything? No, and there, there's so much more to uh, dissect, which we will. Uh, but I, I just want to end this segment with this. I, I mentioned the Eagles. Rebuilding year, and they've actually they've been pretty good. And the Washington football team might have the worst owner in the history of professional sports. They can't get out of their own way, and they're competitive. And they found a quarterback kind of. almost by accident. So now the Dallas Cowboys are good. The Eagles are getting better. Washington can only go up. The Giants are in last place. All the money they spent, that's not a good look. Man, Tish might must be pulling out their hair. So right now, Jason Garrett, it's by the way, Thanksgiving week, right? Jason Garrett gets fired on his off day, and his brother, John Garrett, got fired yesterday after a three and eight season at Lafayette. Not going to be a happy time at the Garrett household, although they will get paid. 1-800-919-3776. Other things to talk about. We'll take your phone calls as well. But, um, yeah, the offense has not been good, but not much of the team has been um, that good either. Want to remind everybody the Michael K. Show on 